Mr. Clare. Good evening. My name is Jason Clare. I have two children enrolled in the district in eighth grade with a 4.0 GPA and a senior who just earned the Horizon Stellar were given for maintaining a 4. Point GPA all four years of his high school. They're smart kids and have had some pretty good instructors to guide them. Unfortunately, I've had to address and formally complain about several concerns I've had this year regarding their curriculum. These concerns included new senior assignment assignments after the mask mandate was abolished. In one class, students with masks were assigned to one side of the room. Those without were segregated to the other. Another instructor employed scare tactics telling students that if they didn't wear masks, they could kill vulnerable teachers by spreading the virus. Additionally, this instructor told their class that aside from a few dead people voting, there is no proof of fraud in the 2020 presidential election, and video records at least two class periods with a camera pointed towards the students and has used it as a tool of intimidation to straighten out unruly students with threats to review the recordings. Another instructor assigned their class a true or false question assignment. Questions included, I have been vaccinated, I have family members who cannot be vaccinated, I worry about someone who I care about who refuses to be vaccinated, I know someone who has died of COVID. On January 24th, an instructor discussed with the class a school board meeting scheduled for that evening. The meeting was rumored to include a proposal to reinstate mask mandates. The instructor told the class that Representative Pat Proctor was stirring the pot by make, making masks a political issue and that I quote, the Proctor crazies are going to show up in force to the meeting. Many of my concerns involve the written or spoken word. Words matter, they can hurt, influence and inspire people of all ages, which is why book assignments matter. Last year, my son was assigned The Kite Runner by Khalid Hassani. The book is on the American Library Association's top 10 list of most challenged books for 2008, 12, 14 and 17 for containing offensive language, sexually explicit material, and depictions of homosexual rape. Had I known of the assignment and the controversy surrounding the book, I would have strongly objected and voiced concerns as I did with the previously mentioned examples. Even though I am an observant and outspoken parent, I failed my child in this instance by not having the proper resources to question this book assignment. However, the school system failed parents by not disclosing years of established concerns from other people surrounding this work. Until the process has changed or legislation is passed to make school assignments more transparent, I encourage parents to sit down with their children every evening and ask them these questions. How was your day and what did you learn in school? Review, review their assignments. If you don't like what you see, stand up for them. Seconds remaining. Talk with other parents and challenge the system. If you don't, who will? Thank you for allowing me to for this evening. Thank you. I also want to thank Vanessa Reed for hearing a very large majority that has been silent for way too long. And I want to thank the rest of the board for working together and trying to hear everybody's side. Um, <clears throat> our daughter's in, well, we have several students, but one of them is in ninth grade. And she came home one day from school and she said, Mom, I am really uncomfortable with the book that we're reading. Uh, she said the book was twisted, and I looked at it, I read just a couple pages. The first few chapters described janitors looking at the bouncing, jiggling butts of the girls' high school tennis team and having sexual thoughts about them. Um, the, I didn't even get to the second chapter, I'm not going to lie to you, I did not read this whole book. Um, to me, that's predatory grooming when you have adults looking at children in a sexual, exploitive way. Um, the other part was this girl with her breast is very, it, one good thing about this book is it has very good sensory language and does not have any um, compound complex sentences. I'm a uh, certified New York State English teacher, so I was kind of looking for some literary value in it, but I didn't find any. Um, the guy, the, the girl is, sprawls over the hood of his car and she whispers seductively in, her, in his ear and then she opens her mouth and he says, Oh God, I've been waiting so long for this. I don't feel that this is educationally appropriate. Furthermore, there are kids that are being sexually abused, that are being, um, there's a lot of issues in these books besides the sexually explicit content. 
and teachers, as well educated as I was to be a teacher, I am not educated to deal with the triggers that come up in students. And neither is any teacher in the classroom. Psychologists and child behaviorists, they go to school for years to learn how to help these students. I'm, um, whether you agree with these books and the content or not, I'm sure everyone in this room could agree that there needs to be a safe way for a student to self-advocate. I reached out to the teacher, being a former teacher myself, I know I'm really, really busy, so I asked the teacher, what are you trying to teach? And I can come up with a book for you, I know you don't have time. We never, and to this day, still have not received any email response from that teacher. I do know they're human, and I do know they're busy, so I'm not throwing any teacher under the bus. Um, my husband got upset and contacted the principal. Um, he tried to call back and left a voicemail. Then we called him back and left a voicemail, and then it, we just played phone tag. Meanwhile, my daughter sat in the classroom for three block periods. Um, I think the, the issues here are communication, giving students a safe, pressure-free choice, and then having a proactive course plan and design to meet that need. We need, under, we need to understand. Hassel, your time is up. Okay, thank you very much for having you. <coughs> Okay, moving on to item six, consideration of character strong social curriculum. Dr. Brooke? This, um, this is uh, something that Dr. Rettelberger will lead um, because it relates to the special. And I know there's been some stuff out there on social media about an individual named Aaron Jones um, and some concerns and objections about the um, information that this individual shares through Character Strong. And want to make it very clear that she doesn't work for Character Strong. Character Strong partnered with her to um, develop an equity training program, which we talked about equity. Um, but this is not part of what the district is planning on purchasing. Um, right now, we are focused on the social emotional learning curriculum, the um, self awareness, being able to have those interpersonal communication skills, good decision making skills. Those are the pieces that we're focused on. You can see the bit up there, or the quote up there that was given to us that does not include um, the equity training piece. So that's what I have for you all. What questions can I answer? May I speak? Um, Dr. Rettelberger, in your presentation, I admit that you tried to smear me. May I just state to all the district staff that the board is what runs the district, not the staff. And I have asked Dr. Roth to make sure that the board gets to see the presentations because I don't own a rubber stamp. I know some of these other board members do but I didn't bring one to this job. So if I'm going to vote on curriculum, I need to have had the opportunity to look over it fully. And when you log on, you have to get, you can just get samples. You can't see the whole website. It's meant to be purchased. Also, I don't appreciate your attempt to pretend like Erin Jones doesn't currently contribute. Okay, she's a current contributor, which is the same as an employee. She does, you're correct. Do you employee. have control over? what she contributes to. We're not Do you have control over what she contributes to? No, but no, you don't. Thank you. So Aaron Jones, who works for Character Strong, is absolutely a supporter of the 1619 project. I took an oath to protect the Constitution when I became a board member. Anybody that has looked into the 1619 project would understand that it is against the Constitution. Its goal is to try to tear the country apart. So I will not ever sit here and tolerate someone promoting a curriculum that is influenced at all in any way by someone that supports the 1619 Project. And I'm perfectly happy standing alone on that. I will respect my oath, even if I'm the only one doing it. Are you going to deny that John Norlin has anything to do with Character Strong Curriculum? I'm not familiar with that. You're not familiar with him, okay. Well, he is one of the two founders of Character Strong. There are two men that put the program together. When did, when did the program become into existence? 
I'd have to go. Oh, you don't know how long it's been in existence. Okay. Well, it's been in existence since roughly 2017. So if we're also going to look at a curriculum, I would appreciate looking at a curriculum that has a better history. Most schools basically shut down for two years. So we have what? We're gonna hire a company that has roughly three years in experience for curriculum for our entire school. Did you get the email that I sent you a couple days ago that hasn't been replied to yet? I received all the emails that you had sent to me and did not reply to the last one as I believe I received it on Saturday afternoon and knew that I would be addressing it here at this meeting. So did you address that whether or not the state law requires SEL? Uh, the state expectations. No, the state does, is it law? Do we have to have SEL in our district? Is it a law? There's no law to teach math or reading. You're right, there is no law for SEL. Are there specifics mandated by the state board or only guidance for SEL? Yes. Are there specifics mandated by the state board or only guidance for SEL? What are they? They were listed in the PowerPoint, Brian, if you wanna go back. So are they guidance? They're standards. They're standards, so they're not laws. That was part of my email. So we are not mandated to teach SEL. We are not, we're not under no law, no obligation. If In fact, to be excuse me, Danielle, you already had your opportunity. This is my Ms. turn Reed, to speak. I would appreciate you represent us as the board. Please don't speak so disrespectfully to one of our staff members. We can have conversations with you nicely. There's no reason to accuse me. I am not trying to be disrespectful. I am supposed to tell the truth. I apologize if you feel like I'm being disrespectful. Your social media is the only thing I'm aware of that's disrespectful. You blocked me on social media, so. So we are. So we I are was required. going to say we are that required. John Norlin, who's one of the founders of Character Strong, tweeted May 31st of 2020 after he founded his company. I will not. I will not remain silent and will do what I can to dismantle systematic racism. And that's exactly what this program would do. So that is one of the founders of this program. And I don't know that that view is held by everyone in the community. We serve everyone in the community. And what I'm asking for is objectivity. I'm asking for it for our staff. I'm asking for it from this board. I'm asking for it for Dr. Rose. I don't think we should be siding with any political side, any extreme, I think we should shoot straight down the middle. A tweet from Aaron Jones, who is the creator of the equity training, but we don't get to decide what she contributes to in the character strong curriculum. White privilege, I apologize, I couldn't get the Wi-Fi working, so I'm working for my phone. White privilege is not thinking twice about filming yourself or taking selfies, doing things you know are illegal because you are pretty sure there won't be consequences. I also don't know that that represents our entire community. I don't know that our entire community signs on and agrees with those ideals. Ann Jones recommends the 1619 Project. Here are her reading suggestions, which would be for staff. She, must, she mentions a bunch of authors. I'm not gonna take the time to go through that, but included in that, is a 1619 project, the 1619 project broadcast, along with teaching while white, revolu, rev, 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 sorry, revisionist history, code switch, this American life, words matter, nice white people, calling justice, seeing white, facing ourselves, speaking of racism. Um, let's see, some of the books that currently are in question for myself for having like. 80 F words or something is the hate you give also, which is currently in our library. Dear White People is another um, TV show, movie. So the other founder who you also may not be familiar with is Houston Kraft. He's one of the other two gentlemen. This is his post the year that he founded the company. I am not a liberal snowflake. He goes on to say some other things and he says winter is coming. John Norland also had a post, um, which is a part of what you're bringing on, social emotional learning through the lens of social justice. 
I don't know that everyone in our community agrees with those ideologies. I think if we move forward with this curriculum, we're ignoring the parts, the families, the taxpayers and the students who don't all sign on to the far left agenda. And that's, that's my understanding. That's the emails that I'm getting from parents. I have some emails that I've been asked to read from parents. And I believe that's all I have to say. I appreciate you standing through what I have to say. Um, I will not be misunderstood. I respect and I appreciate and I highly value every single staff member of this district and everyone sitting on the board next to me. I also am not going to sit quiet on things that I'm very passionate about. So I apologize if I sounded disrespectful. I am extremely passionate. Please do not misunderstand me. So, question for you, Dr. Seeing Lillard. since that this, this first tier in um, Character Strong has been at Netty, have you reviewed every module that's in that first tier? I personally am not, but our staff have. And there's no way that anything that is objectionable would have leached into there no. that you're aware of. We, we would not. Because my, my thing is, the minute that it is voted on and six months down the road, suddenly there is some grand revelation of, oh yeah, look at this. I would hate to feel the repercussions sure. of the community of that. Uh, and that that gives me pause of not knowing I absolutely for sure. If you can understand that. I think the difficult piece, and Dr. Ruth, you can say, you know. Well, the one thing, one thing that you've got to define is objectionable. What do you find is different than what uh, Ms. Reed finds or what Mr. Goodman finds or what I find objectionable? So everything that we do as a public school across the nation, somebody can find an objection to. Every, every literature, every lesson, everything out there. So to sit here and tell you nothing's going to be objectionable, that would be that would be a false pre. A okay, false so pre but that's fine. fine. I'm not understanding the logic of the board that you're going to purchase a curriculum that's founded by far left agendists. They are not quiet about how they're activists. How are you going to purchase their curriculum and sit here and say to the public and to myself that you're going to assume there's no no undertones, no training for CRT in there? It just doesn't make sense to me. But that's just me, and I won't say another word. Thank you. We need to entertain a motion. Yes. This time we need to entertain a motion. Do we have a motion to accept the character strong social curriculum as presented? I move. Okay. We have a motion by, by Wells. I second. Second. We have a motion by Mrs. Wells, a second by Mr. Powell to accept the Character Strong Social Curriculum as presented. All of those in favor? Five, two. Thank you. <laughs> to the USD 453 Board of Education, Dr. Rose, Superintendent of Schools, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Sandy Smith. I'm a resident of the city of Leavenworth and was a paraprofessional for 10 and a half years at Leavenworth High School. I've been hearing and reading a lot of misinformation and disinformation about some of the books being taught in the high school English classes. I, in fact, helped teach both The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Union and Twisted. Because I could not recall anything untoward in Twisted, this last week I reread it. I still can't find anything to cause concern. Both of these books were about young teenage boys trying to find themselves in a not-so-friendly world. In one case, the book was based on the author's experiences as a Native American boy living on a reservation and making the decision to try to get a more complete education at the nearby town school, which happened to be primarily white students and staff. The other book is about a boy who lives in a somewhat abusive and chaotic home and is bullied at school, having decisions made for him that don't take him into consideration. In both books, the boys find their footing and they're able to go forward with their lives. The books teach about perseverance, humility, self-confidence, and victories. Being the mother of a son, sister of three brothers, and aunt to ten nephews, and parent to many male students, I know that the few sexual references in the story are just normal thoughts of teenage boys. 
They are nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be alarmed at, and certainly nothing to warrant banning a book. And these were mere mentions in the books. They were not what the book was about. I'm an avid reader from early childhood. Literature throughout time has been filled with sexual innuendos and some not so subtle. When you go home, get out your Bible. Read Genesis 19, 30 through 38. After you read that, are you going to ban the Bible or are you going to find a way to discuss such passages with the youth in your life? Are you going to ban Shakespeare and Ernest Hemingway and other famous authors? And along with the disinformation has come attacks on specifically our English teachers and librarians. This is totally uncalled for. These are teachers who are professionals, highly trained in their field. They are the ones who spend time with your children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews day in and day out. Through the last two years, they have worked hard to maintain an excellent education through the pandemic. They do not deserve these attacks. They do not deserve to have their names and pictures put on social media. Someone needs to be looking out for their safety, their mental health, their sense of belonging in the education field. Please remember that this is a new day and age. I am a 69 year old Christian Caucasian woman. Through my many year, years of raising my son and working with youth, I've learned to listen to them. Their world is different than what ours was. However, this, through this whole uproar about some of the books, I have not seen where the students were involved. Have you asked them their thoughts or are you only calling out your own agenda? Thank you for listening and I hope you'll take your time to think about what I've said. Thank you so much for listening. Um, my name is Anna Emmerich. I have a bachelor's degree in elementary education and a master's in education. I am certified to teach in Kansas, Missouri, and Virginia. Um, I'm also a parent of a sophomore student here at Leavenworth High School. I come to you tonight to express my concern and disappointment in several literature collections that have been utilized at LHS. As an educator, I know the parents place a trust that we will have their students college and career ready by the time that they graduate high school. I also know that parents put an immeasurable trust that we will preserve and protect their students' values, character, and individualism. The absolute true story of a part-time Indian read in the LHS sophomore English class incites controversy due to the novel's depiction of alcohol, poverty, bullying, violence, profanity, slurred, slurs related to homosexuality and mental disability, and references to masturbation and promotion of pornography. Materials of this nature not only violate the trust parents place, but also jeopardizes the validity of state standards and objectives. What state standard does the content align with? Why would any school want to openly invite controversy and insult students' values and promote sexuality? And who decides or approves the appropriateness of these books? Educators are not certified or trained to facilitate a discussion or aid in the residual effects that such topics can trigger in victims of addiction, physical or sexual and emotional abuse. It's not only dangerous, but irresponsible. It is my belief that public classrooms should acknowledge the various backgrounds of all students and err on the side of caution and present material that is of high literary quality. I'm not asking that we put on rose-colored glasses as we select literature for our students. Rather, I'm asking that we be vigilant in the selection as to protect and preserve each student's value, experiences, and, and inspire character development. Thank you. I spoke. I, first of all, I wanted to address you and say, I'm so sorry as a teacher that you feel attacked or anything like that. Um, nobody is trying to ban books. I wanted to bring up the point that um, I have taught in several states and I am an e um, English teacher. This book was read for eight weeks long. I have never, and it's the only book that was read this year, uh, any, the only novel that was read this year. I have never spent, I spent four weeks on Shakespeare with a sophomore class. Um, and I'm also concerned that you, there was nothing in there that bothered you about that. It talks about a boy, I, I'm sure there's lots of issues, but there are thousands of books that can address the same thing without compromising a student's moral values or their comfort level. Um, it talked about a, a guy looking at pornographic magazines and that he's the master of masturbation and that it should be normalized and it's not normal for some families and if they want to do that in their family that's fine but you need to allow choice again um like i said 
there needs to be a choice and an outlet. And I, I think teachers are doing an amazing job. I think there is too much on teachers already, but there are thousands of books out there. And my sister-in-law is Native American and she, she does not even agree with that book. Um, she also gave me several books that would be so much better at addressing what it's really like. Um, thank you for giving us the time and thank you for listening to all sides. We appreciate it. And thank you, Laura Batson, and what the district is already doing. It's amazing that you guys are already taking steps. Thank you. Mr. Hassel? Good evening. I've been here throughout this, uh, very beginning of this meeting, all the way to the end, and I've heard arguments on both sides. And in 2017, this school board, maybe different members, I don't know, um, voted on an approved curriculum. And just this last year, we've identified um, curriculum that promotes uh, sexual fantasies, sexual content, and to most feel that's inappropriate, and some don't, I got it. Um, but tonight we voted, or the board voted on another curriculum, the SEL, that's already been identified to have controversial content in a module that's been agreed to be taken out, the CRT. And I don't understand why it was voted on and approved knowing that this um, SEL already had CRT content in it that had to be removed. And I don't know what other modules are in it, but I have to assume that it's in line with the already currently approved curriculum. And every single one of us, and I may have missed somebody, stood up and pledged allegiance to the flag that stood for the republic for which we stand, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I've testified to you tonight, there's two people in jail right now who took the liberty from young women and were put in jail by our justice system for what they deem to be socially normal, socially acceptable, because they acted on their perverted fantasies that are being taught in our school system right now. And I disagree with it. I don't, I don't think it has any place in our learning. Sexual content, in my opinion, and I think I have several supporters here, should be a private thing. It should not be something that's publicly spoke about or spoke, publicly taught as acceptable. When you have people that promote sexual fantasies as something that's normal, I was in law enforcement for four years. I'll tell you what, I put a lot of people in jail who violated sexual rights of juveniles. They're in both the juvenile detention facility and the state penitentiary. And I have no regret for what I did. And I stand here to testify to you that having sexual, sexual fantasies in our school curriculum is wrong. It should be something that's private and discussed between parents and children. Thank you for your time. Hi, um, I'm Karen Overby, and um, I stayed to the end and nixed all my comments because I want to thank you very much for addressing almost everything that I um, that I had to talk about. But I wanted to stay to publicly thank Ms. Reed and Ms. Murphy for not voting for this SEL curriculum. I, like Ms. Reed, did some research on it and was uncomfortable. And I just felt, I feel like we didn't need to do this so quickly. Um, take a look at what's in it, take a look at who's behind it. And something that's very concerning to me as a parent and seeing what's going on with what's being pushed nationwide in our schools through SEL. SEL is that vehicle where a lot of these ideologies that are very objectionable to a lot of us are coming in because it's all about feelings and emotions and that's a perfect vehicle for some of some of the racial identity, um, sexual um, ideologies that are getting into our schools. 
And I think we need to be very, very careful with SEL education. And you all said that the equity training package was not part of this purchase. And I'd like to hold you to that. Because if something pops up later on down the line because you didn't take the time to look at it or something else is added on to this, um, well, we're going to be back here again. So I wish you would have taken a little more time, done a little more research, but here we are. But I wanted to stay and publicly thank those board members who voted to, um, you know, slow your roll a little. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Sixteen three, board member comments, please read. Okay, here we go. Hope this makes sense. I'm uncomfortable hearing that this is a transparent district. Getting a notice of new curriculum on a Thursday leading into spring break week and then being told when I emailed Dr. Rose that the presentation would be given on Monday or apparently staff members waiting to comment on re responses to emails because they want to talk during the presentation is insufficient. There are some things we should have more than a couple days paired with the weekend to review. Um, I feel like it was proven in the case of uh, respectfully Mr. Zek that when rash decisions are made, mistakes are made. Letting parents and taxpayers look over curriculum for several weeks with an online login would have been much more transparent, in my opinion. I hope to see something like that more in the future. To reply to Ms. Wells, she's not blocked, has never been blocked to my knowledge. We just aren't Facebook friends. I did not want to disappoint the 1,609 people that voted for me. I believe the only member that surpasses me in votes is Lisa Murphy. I did quickly share a message without reading its details from a friend who is finally opening their new private school. I acknowledge how this was confusing to some in the community. I believe any individual with a concern could have spoken to me for quick resolve. Do you want an expelled student to have no other school options? I have been in buildings and meetings with departments and individuals working for this district and I've been working nonstop and I don't plan on stopping. I will contact Mr. Ida Cabbage this next week in response to Katie McAllister's comment. I did not set a date. I just have not shown up there. I did not forget about her. And I did out of respect not visit her when masks were still being worn because I did not want to offend her if I did not wear a mask. I have been called a racist. What I find racist is for a student to be assumed that by the color of their skin, they may not be able to raise their hand in class or be on time, which are some of the things I came across from the employees of this curriculum that was voted in tonight. Thank you to the staff at Third Avenue. I loved your presentation. Um, from that presentation and the tour that I took, it appears you guys are doing a phenomenal job, especially with the resources and facility that you have to work with. And I thank Jack for bringing that up because exactly what you said was exactly the thoughts that I had. So thank you. <laughs> 